You know, we still believe in the principle of equal time on this program, and while everybody is talking about the impeachment of Donald Trump, we here at the Zero Hour believe that Mike Pence deserves his day in court too. And our next guest has some excellent thoughts and insights about that. John Nichols is, uh, we like to think, a good friend of the program. He is a great political writer. He is a uh, Washington correspondent for The Nation or National Affairs correspondent. He is the, an, the author of a number of books, including his latest, which is Horsemen of the Trumpocalypse, a field guide to the most dangerous people in America. And he wrote a piece that caught our eye the other day uh, it was headlined, Manafort, Manafort Monday turns into a very bad day for Trump and Mike Pence. Good equal time there, John, for Mike, and thanks for coming on the program. It's a total honor to be with you, and I'm really glad we're talking about Pence, because the, the truth of the matter is that Mike Pence, uh, I would argue, is in as much trouble or more trouble than uh, Donald Trump. It's just that Pence is too boring to cover for most people, but right. we'll make him interesting. Right, and he can't have dinner with women reporters, so they can't cover him. Um, That's right. But, you know, this, this, I'm so happy to hear you say that, and I really want to hear more about it, and here's why, among other reasons, which is, you know, as I said in my opening to this show, you know, Democrats sometimes need to be careful about what they wish for. And a, right. sen a scenario where Donald Trump gets impeached and removed from office or 25th Amendment or whatever, and everybody goes, oh, now we have the sane people in charge. Now we have the adults in charge. Mike Pence seems like such a stable guy. He would, I think, be more effective at doing horrible things to this country than Donald Trump has been. So uh, mm -hmm. I want to I hear that Manafort Monday, which is, by the way, that's my fun day, as the old song goes, that, that, um, <laughs> that Manafort Monday is going to be bad for Mike Pence. Why is that? Well, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. And, and first off, uh, one has to understand is, that I'm afraid much of the media doesn't, that you know, any discussion about the Russia thing, about Flynn, about Sessions, about all these folks, you know, Mike Pence is in the middle of all that stuff. He likes to go on television and say that he knows nothing, absolutely nothing about anything, that he's the most uninformed vice president in the history of the country. But the fact of the matter is, that's all been proven already to be untrue. He was in the meetings. He was you know, in the, the circles of activity. He was in charge, mind you, of the transition process. And then you have to ask yourself, well, how did Mike Pence get in this position? I mean, what was, what's the connection there? Donald Trump didn't know Mike Pence before the election. Donald Trump uh, wasn't even endorsed by Mike Pence. Mike Pence backed uh, Ted Cruz in the Republican primary in Indiana. Uh, the person who introduced Donald Trump to Mike Pence was Mr. Manafort. And in fact... When Manafort was brought in as a fixer to put together the Republican National Convention, uh, which was a process that includes picking a vice president, writing a platform, doing all of these things, his first major act was to begin ma manipulating the process to get Pence into position. Why is that? Because all of the stuff that Manafort is in trouble for, for you know, his dealings with oligarchs and foreign countries and all of that hidden money, that was all related to lobbying Congress. And when Mike Pence was in Congress for a number of years, he fancied himself a foreign policy expert. He served on the key committees, and he was a guy that Manafort found plenty of sympathy with, if you get my drift. I think I and do. So, yeah, Manafort's the guy who wanted Trump on the ticket. And with Jared Kushner, Manafort manipulated the process to make sure that the guy who Trump wanted, Chris Christie, who admittedly is an ethical mess, but was much more politically competent and frankly probably would have, would have contributed more, a lot more useful things to the administration, 
they they elbowed Christie out of the way, played all sorts of incredible games, literally told people that planes weren't flying, they were grounded. They, they, it was like a, a bad you know episode of a 60s comedy show. But they got Mike Pence and Donald Trump in the same room, and they basically pushed them together. And that's why Pence is there. And the only reason I go through that kind of complicated scenario is that people understand Mike Pence would not be vice president of the United States today were it not for the interventions of Paul Manafort. And, here, and here's, so as Manafort goes down, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, he, the, the here, here's what I get from that, John Nichols. So here we have this now f- f- rapidly f- being fleshed out picture of, uh, of Paul Manafort as the ultimate corrupt Washington hustler who takes money from these foreign sources and 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 does these deals and violates the uh, Foreign Agent Registration Act and does all this stuff that that, he, that, that almost personifies what's corrupt about the current uh, Washington system and does it not only for American oligarchs but for oligarchs and corrupt uh governments and dictatorships all around the world. So he represents everything the American people across the political spectrum despise. He has, in the political world, found a kindred spirit over a series of years. This is how I'm processing what you said. A kindred spirit over yeah. a, over a period of years in Mike Pence, who is the president of the United States. Paul Manafort is neck deep in dirty dealing. And I think you're saying that's not a good sign for Mike Pence's future. Well, let me, let's continue our scenario. Let's fill in the next blanks, if we will. Um, supposedly, Manafort, who, by the way, like all these guys, there's an awful lot of people, I don't know if you noticed this, who, quote, unquote, volunteered to help the Trump campaign. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not sure they volunteered out of sincere partisan sympathy. My sense is that they volunteered because they wanted to, have a piece of this thing because it helped them with the people who actually pay them. And so what would benefit Paul Manafort more than defining the vice presidency of the United States, putting somebody inside. And so once Manafort then is eased out of the process, because he is an absolute scorching ethical mess. And, you know, I mean, he's like, you can imagine it too ethical, unethical for the Trump campaign. Um, as he's forced out, um, he doesn't disappear. He doesn't go away. We now know that Manafort was regularly talking with, consulting with Mike Pence when Mike Pence was running the transition. Manafort was on the phone to Mike Pence saying, you know, this would be a good person to put there. Or what do you think about this guy? Right. And Manafort's number two guy, Gates, was literally moving in and out of the White House during that period. So as we begin to take this whole thing apart, yes, most people will look with great excitement at, you know, for any detail, any information about interactions post Manafort's departure from the campaign with Trump. And that's significant, and there may well be. In fact, there certainly appear to have been phone calls. But we ought to expand our focus and ask ourselves, what was Paul Manafort doing with Mike Pence? What was he saying to him? How were they interacting? Who went up the ladder, went up the political food chain, if you will, at the encouragement of Manafort via the central role that Mike Pence played? And then the final question, did Mike Pence lie aggressively and repeatedly about knowledge of people who were put into positions by the transition that Mike Pence ran, but he claims he knows nothing about. When you start to unravel all this, uh, you start to recognize that these inquiries are not going to just hit on Donald Trump's family members or associates. They're going to go, I I, I will promise you that they're going to go to Mike Pence's office as well. So let's start thinking about the articles of impeachment we might see against Mike Pence, okay? Now, you point out in your 
article, you remind us that, and again, we're talking with John Nichols of The Nation about his Manafort Monday piece. And now that, that they've been indicted on 12 counts of money laundering involving at least $18 million. And by the way, I have no idea how to spend a million dollars on clothes. But then when I lived in LA, I used to go to the, the, uh, the, the secondhand clothing stores in Hollywood and I'd get the producers like Brioni's suits for $75. But, but I have no idea how to do this. But, but uh, he, $18 million, secret overseas bank accounts that had uh, $75 million flow through them. Is following the money going to bring me the head of Mike Pence or is it going to be? No. Did, did, so what, I doubt it. What's the article of how, how do they read those articles? I think it'll of, be lies. I think it'll be outright lies um, about uh, who about the continuing conversation, who is being consulted, who is being brought into positions, and why. And um, look, the fact of the matter is that Mike Pence is a is a political fixer. Um, he's not he's not a particularly appealing political figure. Uh, he's never been overly popular. His fellow Republicans wouldn't put him in a leadership position in the House of Representatives when he was governor of Indiana. Uh, his polls were so bad that he was the only prominent Republican that was willing to join Donald Trump's ticket. But the one thing about Mike Pence is he has lived his entire adult life as an extension of the moneyed interests in the Republican Party. Those include uh, the Koch brothers, who's very, very close to but also uh, all of the fixers, all of the, the inside players, people like uh, Paul Manafort and the folks around him. Pence is different to these people. And so when you start to talk about where the trouble will be for Mike Pence, I will suggest to you that it isn't going to be the great big things of, you know, like a bribe or something like that. It's much more likely to be working with folks like Manafort to put people into positions of power. And uh, remember, this is the guy running the transition. So what, I would, what I'd say is before you write the articles of impeachment, let's see where the inquiries go. But let's watch for those red flags to go up as we figure out how General Flynn got the position that he did, how Sebastian Gorka got the position that he did, how a number of these people got put into these key positions in the White House and at, basically at Donald Trump's arm. And was that done with knowledge? Because if it was, then on a, on a regular basis, Mike Pence has lied, as I think, again, many people believe to be the case. I'm not the first one saying this. Mike Pence has lied repeatedly about the transition process and about who was where for what reason, including people that got into a lot of trouble. Now, people who casually talk about impeachment and don't know anything about it, will say, oh, well, where's the impeachable offense in that? In fact, if you look at what people are held to account for historically, what they've been held to account for, it is very often, you know, being part of a cabal, being part of an inner circle that makes things happen and then lying about that. And you're often caught out in the lie as much as you are in the actual, you know, deed. So I would just argue, and I've argued this for quite a long time, Pence has played fast and loose. He's played on the margins politically. He's played with a lot of bad people. And the notion that the, the mess that has developed, and, and it is a mess for this administration, is only going to touch on uh, Donald Trump or on you know people, call, people in the Trump family. That's just not the case. Pence is much more wrapped up. In fact, again, I will argue much closer to Manafort and maintained a much steadier conversation with Manafort than Trump did. So let's 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 go for that. Let's examine that. And at the heart of the matter, let's not lose sight of that as we try to figure out, you know, how do you hold these people to account? Again, my bet is Pence gets held to account as quickly, maybe even more quickly than does Trump. Well, there's so much, there's so many places we could take it. I mean, I think it, 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 just in brief, uh, it, it's one of the points I think you're making is it doesn't have to be a indictable crime for something to be an no. impeachable offense. Uh, but 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 I guess last question, John Nichols, which is any any articles of impeachment would have to be voted on uh, by uh, Republicans on Capitol Hill. Yep. 
So what is going to impel the Republicans to uh, vote in, for impeachment, no matter how egregious the, offense, the ethical offense is? Oh, it, it won't. They won't be impelled quickly. There's no question of that. But um, I think there's one thing to understand. Republicans in Congress and in the House and the Senate have very little taste for Trump or for Pence. Uh, these guys are not their friends. These guys are not people that they were politically close to. Remember, again, when Pence was in the House of Representatives, he tried for a leadership position and crashed and burned. He was a, he was a very unpopular figure politically. And, and, and that's important to understand because there, there will be a willingness to cut these guys loose if the heat gets too right. intense. Right. And one of the things to remember is the heat may get intense not because of something that Mueller brings down. Uh, it might well become intense because the president tries to get rid of Mueller or right. because other actions are taken in that regard. And then suddenly, you know, you see, you, one thing I know about impeachment, I wrote a book about it. Uh, I know. Polls go bad or when the economy goes bad, impeachment starts to become really popular, even with people you didn't expect to like it. Well, you know, this is the kind of thing we're going to be looking for in the months to come. So I have to say, John Nichols, thanks for your great uh, insights on that. Thanks for coming on the program, and thanks for cheering me up. <laughs> well, just just feel good that, you know, Manafort Monday will in, undoubtedly be followed by many other Manafort and extended days. May we have an entire week. So, John Nichols. Yeah. Thanks again. Thanks, brother.